up on today's show, video build catch up. So we're going to look at how we've got on with the Tonka, which is absolutely a stunning kit. And also we've made a start on the 135th scale uh, Hind 24. This is the big old trumpeter kit. Clear coats, uh, questions and tips coming in from the forum. So hopefully we'll be answering some of those. So we'll be covering clear coats today. Two reviews for you this week. We've got the 132nd scale uh, special hobby T2 Buckeye. This is the big old 132nd chunky kit. And we've also got the Atari 148 scale Apache. This isn't the AH64, this is the A36. We've also got the results from the poll uh, that was running in the forum for the next build you want to see here on Flory Models. Plus we've got all your SIG and group build news from the forum. Hello, welcome to Flory Models, I'm Philip Flory. Good old week this week. Um, to be honest, I really got stuck into the tornado straight away. Now, the thing is, um, many a time you review a kit, okay, and I've done quite a few recently, as you know, uh, but a kit review is only as good as the bit of plastics in front of you. So I can point out errors like sink marks, miss molds, things that look like they're overcomplicated and all those things like that. But really sometimes you sort of review a kit in the hope it's gonna be okay. Um, and one of those things is sometimes you tend to think of like, you know, the Tamiya and the Hobby Boss ones and you think to yourself, well, look, I've just paid 50, 60, 100 pound. Um, you, so you're pretty much guaranteed they're gonna be okay, all right? But when you spend 20 quid on something, you tend to think really what you're gonna get for your money. Now, historically, um, Revell have always brought out good quality kits at a really good price. Um, so when I started this one, I was sort of in your mind, you're thinking, oh, it'll be okay, it's gonna be fine and all the rest of it. Uh, but secretly, you're sort of fingers crossed. Um, and because of the complexity of the kit, the way it actually goes together uh, and everything else, I thought we were gonna run into a little bit of problems. But I'm happy to report, it is completely built, we're just ready for paint now, um, that I have used no filler on this kit whatsoever, apart from a small problem, small, actually quite a large problem, but made by myself where I didn't glue the forward fuselage. Um, it's, you've got a bar down the bottom, this plate for the, the belly. Uh, it moves up and down. Um, so what I did is I put these side ones on and got those located in, and we've got completely seamless, no filler whatsoever or anything else down here, joins. Um, and we had a small gap left at the top. What I should have done is just pushed it up and then put it all in and we'd have all been absolutely fine. But unfortunately, um, as you can see here, when I was going through it all, uh, I sort of knew there was something amiss, but didn't really sort of think too much of it. But certainly, you know, you can probably see here and see on the film, we've used quite a bit of uh, plastic card just down in there to shim it, a little bit of glue over the top, and it's taken care of it, and it is absolutely perfect. But, you know, little things people are saying about the flap systems are like, overcomplicated and it's upside down, and I'm reading all these things, and I'm thinking, well, I've just put it together, and it, it just went together. I can't see a problem with it. Um, you know, but as I say, I think some people worry a little bit too much. Get in there, get it glued together, and it'll be absolutely fine. But to build a kit like this, of this complexity, and to get away with no filler whatsoever, is a brand new thing for me. I usually, I'm one of these people that doesn't want to mess around, I'll just get the filler out, fill it, sand it, rescribe it, job done. But this particular one, we've been absolutely fine. So for 20 quid, this thing is a complete and utter bargain. And now I've built it, I can see exactly where the air defense variant is gonna be coming along uh, and everything else like that. And then obviously straight out of the box, I'm doing this as your GR1. You could almost get a GR4 out of it, apart from the cockpit slightly different. Um, and you don't get the glass bit for one of the, the targeting sensors on the front. But apart from that, everything else is actually is here to do it. And it just dropped in fit. Everything went really, really well. Couple of little areas, like I must admit, the tailplane, the way that all goes together is a little bit horrible and nasty so what I'm going to do is position them when it's painted and I'm going to glue them in place um, and things like that but apart from that the rest of it has actually been a real gem to do and a couple of little tips and tricks I show you through the video build about putting it together gets rid of all those little problems but as I say what I've got in the bag now obviously you're going to get part two this week and uh, then next week you'd probably parts three and four will complete the entire build area and then obviously what I'll do is I'm going to get this into paint we're going to do GR1 colors in that nice wraparound camo so we've got the gray and the green all the way around it and we can talk about weathering and actually what spraying camos things like that and all the way through but I do have to report if you have not got this kit in your stash go and get one because for 20 pound it is going to be my stash bargain of the year um, and I know I spoke about the 132nd Hawk that we did um, of uh, theirs as well and that was my kit bargain of the year because it's a lot of plastic for no money at all 
and goes together exceptionally well. This is probably going together better than more expensive kits, shall we say? So anyway, so that is that one now. Part two is up on the site now. Um, it's like a 35 minute part on that one. And as I say, next week, obviously you're gonna get part three and four, uh, which will then really start to bring it together and everything else like that. But as I say, is absolutely fantastic. You can see probably just on the corner here, to be honest, I only started it today, so I'm gonna be doing it today, which is Thursday for me. And then uh, Friday, I'll be working on this and probably over the weekend as well. And we're gonna make a start on this beast. Now, this particular one, I've got the full photo etch set for it as well. Um, with all the color work and everything else. So what we're gonna do is I'm not gonna put lights in it. Originally I was gonna light it up, but I've burnt myself out doing LEDs and lighting. So this is gonna be more focused on the weathering, chipping effects, staining effects, obviously with Russian stuff, faded, things like that, dents even, everything else like that. I've got a lovely reference, because I've got one of these literally an hour up the road from me, um, up at the Western Supermare Helicopter Museum. They've got a German one up there, uh, which is absolutely stunning. She can crawl all over that one, and there's beautiful references. So I've got loads of reference photos, and if I need any more, I can just pop up there. Because one ticket admission gets you for the entire year, so it is very well worth your money. So if you're ever passing, pop into the helicopter uh, museum at Western Supermare. It's well worth your time, because they've got some really lovely subjects in there. So anyway, starting on that one, part one of that will be up obviously next week, and we're gonna make our way through. My plan to this one is, is to get the hind into this so obviously this will probably going to take me a week or two to get it together before it's ready for paint this will then be ready for paint as well so from your point of view everything will just flow through uh, and we can make our way through this one but i intend to do a little bit of scratch building with that one really detailing it up in the paint side of it and the weathering side of it rather than the construction bit which will be absolutely lovely and moving through so there we go that's those all done for you Okay, so something a little bit new. Um, in the forum, obviously, you guys all post up questions and everybody answers and everything else like that. And sometimes it's quite um, easy for me to do a quick video for you to show you. Now, the trouble with doing the quick video, sometimes you get more questions come up from it than you know there was sort of, you know, our answers for, uh, or you just overcomplicate things. So what I've done now is done a special series of videos uh, and we're starting off today with clear coating. Now these are gonna run around about 20 to 30 minutes. Obviously you're not gonna get the full thing here on the new show, so you're only gonna get a clip of it. The full thing will go up into the forum and onto the main site for the members area anyway. So you're gonna get an idea of it if you're not a member. But the thing is, hopefully it will answer all the questions about it. So one of the big ones is people talking about clearing. What is clearing? If you're coming back to the hobby and you haven't heard of clear before, you know, what is it? What is clear coating? When do you use it? Um, you know, and what is it? So so hopefully this will get um, some of your answers for this one in our new tip section. Okay, welcome to the tip section. Something a little bit new. You've asked me something in the forum, so I do a sort of mini video on it, if you like. A little bit more in depth than the quick ones you find actually in the new show and everything else. So, first one. Good questions we've had over the last couple of days, so I'm going to be doing these as we go through. First up, clear coating. What is it? When to use it? Why is it? And everything else like that. Clear coating. Um, it gets its name from clear, which I did. Oh, there it is. Did have a bowl. This is the original clear. Okay, now modelers who have been around over five years, um, certainly ten years, been modelling, you'll know all about this stuff. Basically, FC Johnson's made um, something called clear, spelt with a K readily available in all your supermarkets and everything, anywhere you've got for floor cleaners, things like that. The thing with this stuff was, it is a clear acrylic gloss, okay? And it was dirt cheap. Back in the day, it used to be like two pound a bowl for 500 mil, okay? Um, then it went up a little bit, around about 250 and everything else. Um, we all used it. It was just a cheap to hand, ready to made up. You didn't need to thin it, put it straight in your airbrush and spray. Now, you use this for things like um, obviously protecting a paint coat. Perhaps you've put down a coat of paint, you're very happy with it, you want to overcoat it with something, but you know, you want to be a little bit sort of careful. So you can give it a quick coat of clear, protects your work, makes it very handleable and everything else like that. The big thing it comes in is things like deckling, okay? We say, uh, give it a couple of coats of clear, that's what the guys do. They'll give it a couple of coats of a clear gloss, basically to aid in the, um, the protection of the paintwork and giving a nice smooth finish for the decals to eliminate any silvering that you might get. 
okay? Then obviously you come back with another coat of clear to literally protect the decal and stop any weathering from getting underneath the said decal. So this is things like washes, um, pigments, dry brushing, things like that. Uh, and it just seals everything down. And then obviously you can then use it again afterwards for sealing down washes. And then perhaps you would then come in with a flat or something else after it. But the generic sort of name for clearing things, this is actually where it comes from. Now, disaster struck, I think it must be in about seven years ago now when um, FC Johnson originally the panic went up that they were stopping manufacturing this stuff uh, and then it became clear that what they'd actually done is they brought us in line with other countries and things like that and transferred it over to what they call pledge of multi-surface wax basically this is one of the original bottles that says new improved formula of clear also the thing is because clear has no smell it was a bit of the trouble I think with the kiddies drinking it um, so to keep around the problem, it now smells like a floral shop, okay, and it is a very pleasant smell. Trust me, you know you get complaints from your partner about the smell in the house, after you sprayed this stuff, she'll love it, or not, okay. So the thing is, um, a lot of people said it wasn't as good, okay. Let's put the record straight on this. It isn't the same as the original. This particular one, and we've done on tests before, so I'm not gonna go through it all again. This one, it has a milky look. It is slightly thinner, okay? Now, the milky look, don't worry about. It dries completely crystal clear. I've used it for dipping tests. I've had it on long haul, and I use it on all my models still to this day, okay? This one, though, is a little bit thicker, and this is where the difference comes in. If you're going to um, dip a clear part, which is great if you want to improve the, um, the look of your actual clear parts, or if you've perhaps got a little bit of hazing going on with them, um, it will make them, the opaqueness will be a lot better, okay? It makes them look thinner as well when you dip your canopies, all right? The only thing is you're gonna to need to give it a sort of two to one ratio. So whatever you do with this for one coat, do two with a new one, okay? The other little tip I can give you for this is, um, I think it says down here, don't overcoat for 20 minutes or allow to dry for 20 minutes, no buffing or rinsing required, all right? Well, obviously you're not gonna be buffing or rinsing, but certainly don't wait 20 minutes, give it 10 minutes and then overcoat it. What this enable it to do then is the new coat will eat into the first coat and give you a very nice thick luster look to it but basically this is the, the two you get so if you're new back to this and you hear guys talking about clearing okay this is what we actually mean by it it's a generic term for any type of clear gloss now when we're talking about this uh, originally it was to do with the price as i said you could pick up one of these it was two quid um 500 mil would last the average modeler a couple of years all right what this doesn't mean though let's get the right one um, is that things like here, we've got here, this is, um, is it 500 mil? Yeah, 500 mil of the uh, acrylic gloss here. This is the Vallejo stuff. If you was to mix this with, um, you know, your favorite thinner uh, for doing acrylics, you can make up just the same type of thing as you got here, all right? No problem at all. It's gonna cost you around about 10 pounds to do this. One of these bottles, I think, I've got a price on one here. Yeah, it says nine quid on that one. So if you think, uh, your thinners into this one, a couple of quids worth of thinners into it, but you are gonna end up with then a liter of a clear gloss, all right? So when you're thinking about it, one of these new ones, I think they're around about five an hour, about four pound 50 for 500 mil. So really, you're not, that far out of the ballpark. So obviously what you can do, get yourself an empty bottle, decant some up and ready to go, and then you can just pour it in and away you go. All right, no problem at all. Now, this is where it gets slightly confusing. A few companies, when we suddenly all panicked because there was no such thing as clear anymore, went out, jumped on the bandwagon and invented their own, such as Alclad did it. Okay, now Alclad came up with this one called Aqua Gloss. And if you may be noticing as a pattern forming here, it looks surprisingly like the old one. Okay, now the thing is, this is something like, I think it's about four pound on a bottle, um, and it's only, what was that, 7,500 mil bottle? Uh, ding, ding, ding. It doesn't actually have a, a, a fluid ounce. Oh yeah, 120 mil on this one, okay? So it's a lot of money for really what you've got, okay? This one, if you may notice, is very, very thin. This one is ready to spray. So it's pre-thinned as well and charging you more. Now, I'm not gonna go on a rant about them ripping you off and all the rest of it, but it is an expensive way of doing it. Another thing they do where they jumped on the bandwagon is we have this stuff called clear coat, spelt the same as the original clear, okay? So it's spelt with a K, okay? But they've got coat here with a K as well to get around all those problems. This stuff is, uh, it's like a lacquer 
gloss. Um, I don't know actually what it is. It is D, 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 directions of spray, alkaline. It doesn't actually say what this stuff is. Just contains mineral spirits, um, which means it could be anything. This is good stuff, don't get me wrong. Used it on the Tomcat, everything else. Downside to it is, depending on where in your world, it could be anywhere between a day to dry or a week, okay? That's my only downside to it. Especially if you're using a thick coat, this stuff takes forever to dry. So from my point of view of speed here, I don't tend to use it very often, okay? But don't get me wrong, it is nice and it does give a lovely smooth finish, especially for things like deckling and stuff like that. So if you've got a week to wait, use this stuff. If you haven't, don't go near it, okay? So that's the thing. Now, there is a couple of other things on the market we need to talk about. You can get, as we've got here, mini versions of these big ones. So if you want to give it a whirl and see what it's like, you can obviously do it that way, all right? So these are just mini versions of these, which are quite handy because they're on the shelf, and like I do, I tend to spray them neat, and you can pop them down, and away you go. Other things I have used in the past, we've got these guys as well. These are the Vallejo ones. Um, obviously, we've got the matte we've used, and we've got the gloss. We've used the gloss many, many times. To be honest, I'm steering away from them now, purely because they take too long to dry again. They're not a quick fix. These things tend to be, you can leave fingerprints in them like a day later. It takes a long time to go off, but they do do the job, okay? Or you've got something like in here, where this is my own match, because this is actually the clear in here, dispensed, ready to go, okay? And as you can see, it's white and everything else like that, and it should smell lovely, oh yes. All right, so all I've done is I've decanted it a little bit out so you can use it straight away. Other ones on the market I've used in the past, so we might as well cover them, extra acrylics. The only trouble with these is, great for doing flat work, gloss work, not so much, all right, and everything else like that. Anyway, that's enough rambling about them. Let's get Buster out and try and spray something. Okay, so here is our friend, poor old Buster, who's had more coats now than, well, quite a lot of things, all right? So you can see here, we're a little bit glossy, a little bit flat couple of things I want to show you okay first of all um, is using uh, a gloss okay doesn't have to be glossy you can use it as a flat or a satin depending on how you use your airbrush as well okay so if you wanted to you could use a glossy thing all right for doing almost anything so if I use this gloss so I'm just gonna just for the sake of this I'll show you about using clear in a moment but this is gloss varnish We've got a standard airbrush with a two mil needle in there, okay? So what we're gonna do, to start with, we are gonna put in some thinners. Okay, so we're gonna thin this around about 50-50. Okay, so this just goes in like that. As you can see, it's quite heavy in the old color cup. Uh, gonna need a brush, 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 brush. Thought I had a brush, use a brush, okay. Give it a good old mix. And as you notice, this turns just like every other clear gloss out there. Okay, so we've basically got this now in a bottle. We've now got this stuff, as you can see, in a bottle. And we've got the new clear, because that's it in this bottle. Okay, so it's not clear. The only one that was ever clear was the original. Okay, now this one, let me just check our flow. Okay, so if we put this on somewhere flat, okay, so this is all quite flat at the front as you can see. All right, so high air pressure, and you're just putting down a clear glossy coat. So you want it to be quite wet, and to be honest, this is really rough here. Without fitting it everywhere. Okay, and as you can see, it's nice and glossy and everything else like that. Okay, you might see the tail's quite flat. All right, let's do that. So all we're doing now is a quick clear coat, which will be great. If you were using it now for doing something like deckling, if you were talking about something like, um, you know, obviously any type of weathering, things like that, let this dry, you would overcoat it and it would improve your chances of not getting any silvering and things like that. Okay, no problem at all. Let me just find the extractor room before we will fog out. <coughs> Okay, so what you could do, literally give it 10 minutes, come back, give it another coat. Okay, and you want it to look wet. So if I do this entire tail, as you can see, we're making it look very wet as we're going over it. So you want to be able to see a reflection as you go in. 
So don't worry about air pressure. When people tell you about working in gloss work, you'll need a high air pressure, a low air pressure even. That's rubbish. It's literally the amount you can put down on it. Okay, so if we do this bottom. Now you might be able to see, to all the mist and fog, it's a little bit milky, okay? Now, it will dry back totally, totally clear, okay? So you might be able to see a little bit of milkiness. That is the common thing with all of these. You will get that milky look to it, but it does dry completely clear. Don't be fooled, it's not like you're using flat where you get that whiteness, that's literally too much in there. These will all be absolutely fine as they go back. Okay, so there we go, that's clear. As I said, basically it's glossing, um, but clear has got that sort of name now. Everyone calls it just, I'll oh, put down a clear coat. You know, actually they are mean glossing every time. It's just a cheap way of doing it. So that's our new section, um, calling it Quick Tips. Uh, what we're gonna do is probably do the one a week if I can, um, if we've got the time. Uh, but what will actually happen then is that members, you'll see the full version of that. Obviously that was just the first bit of it. Then we go on about actually using it in different ways of using gloss and using gloss as a flat and as a satin and everything else. Okay, so that's actually gonna be on the main site and I'll link it through to the forum as well. And, and then each week I'm gonna do some questions. So you ask me a question, in the forum um, and I might just grab something out of the forum anyway and do it like that so for instance next week we're going to be talking about smoke and staining okay so we're talking about smoke exhausts from engines uh, like on big heavy bombers on sort of old prop aircraft things like that the different types of it, obviously the more whiter type of smokes to the darker ones right the way through to cordite um, and obviously things from gun smokes uh, on wings of aircraft things like that caused by cordite uh, and those type of effects um, so basically we can cover them a little bit more in detail than we could do just in a quick one because normally they're all going to be about sort of 20 to 30 minutes and obviously that would eat up the news show in no time at all so each week hopefully i'll bring out something a little bit more as we go right the way through so review time we've got two reviews for you look if i move like this we've got this one here which is the 132nd scale special 4b buckeye that's 32nd not the the original um 48 scale but we do have a 48 scale apache and no it's not that type of apache this is the a36 from italery Okay, review time. What we've got here is A36 Apache, not that type of Apache. This is the uh, Italery 148 kit, something a little bit different. Um, it may look like a P51, that's because originally it was a P51. Um, it, basically, the early batches of the P51 were given the designation A36 and became a ground attack bomber. Uh, light attack aircraft. Um, so that's why it surprisingly looks like a P-51. Apparently it was very quickly superseded uh, and everything by the P-47 Thunderbolt, which let's face it, it's quite legendary now. So there we go, basically in the box you see we've got decal markings, uh, three for the US, one for the RAF, handy having this info on the front. Kit number 2729, as I said, 148 scale, does come with one of their sort of new sort of way of putting it, super decal sheets, which normally means you get a few extra variants, things like that. So there's a look at that little decal sheet as you can see just down here and a quick whiz around the box, the usual blurb showing you the markings. We'll say it's quite nice with the RAF markings and again doing well today. Another one with shark mouth on it so it gets my vote every single time. Nice box art as well as you can see. Okay so in the box, yes you might be seeing something form here. You do wonder why they don't sort of get a, a smaller box because it would fit in a box sort of that size but as you say who knows? So, we have a quick whiz through the instructions first. So, Italy, we know how they do their instructions. They tend to be on these big fold out sheets, which are somewhat annoying. Okay, usual thing, we got the call out for the trees. Basically, use everything apart from little bits, canopy at the back, and a different type of windscreen. Color call outs, federal stand, quite a nice touch. Um, and then you've got uh, do, 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 the Italery paint colours. These are the new Italery paint colours. I say new, they're not that new. Okay, so which look like these type of colours. We have reviewed them. Pretty good, very thick. They're very reminiscent of um, model colour paints, as in the thickness. Uh, the only great thing really about them is you can thin them to something like 70% to get them through an airbrush, which makes them fantastic value for money. Okay, so what have we got going down here? Nice little bit of detail uh, going in. 
Um, obviously we've got the air scoop at the back. Again, more details, so we've got the radio shacks, things like that going in. And then so the control surfaces and everything on, on the other side. A little bit of framework going through, cockpit tub, floor, things like that going in. It's a decal for the instrument panels we'd expect. Okay, front end going in. I'm just wondering if this is modular to uh, the other P51s. Okay, and then usual thing, opening up the wing porch, you can need these to put the bomb racks on. Wing goes in at the bottom, gear goes on. Uh, weapons fit, uh, the uh, oil cooler scoop going in there and then obviously all the bits and pieces going on as you can imagine there. So it's not going to be a mass job to put this thing together. Some nice markings, as I say, it's a shame they're in black and white on there, but as you can see, we've got some nice shark mouth there, so that's absolutely lovely. So that is 1944 Corsica. I do believe these were only used around Africa um, and uh, for the Sicily invasion and things like that. I don't think they ever made it sort of standard, but I could be wrong. Okay, so what else we got down here? We've got one from 1943 from Algeria. We've got Italy 1943, and we've got one from Burma as well. So as I said, they all seem to be from the uh, uh, that neck of the woods and out towards Burma as well. So let's have a look at the flight stick. <clears throat> this model was made in South Korea. I know that because it's got it written all here, which is something a little bit different. And then it's been imported for Spark. I haven't seen that before on a kit made in South Korea. Right, so keeping that safe, because you never know, what do we actually got? Now, Italy have been what I call um, on the edge of greatness, but never quite got there. Um, as I said, I, the more I'm doing these reviews, and I apologize, the more critical I'm getting on them. Okay, because I'm just, little things you spot, which are somewhat annoying, uh, because they're small areas that should be fixed. And this is another classic example, because what we've actually got, this kit has got sink marks around this area. And I don't know how well the camera will pick it up, but you might be able to see in the reflections, if I catch up the side cam perhaps. You've actually got this here, which I know has got big framework inside without even looking. Okay, and it is showing through from the outside. Now, don't get me wrong, this could be a thing of greatness, because if you were doing something that has got stressed skin, you could use this all over it, and it would give you the effect of stressed skin. But as far as I know, nobody's done it deliberately to give the effect of stressed skin. But I'm thinking B-52s, you could do an entire side, put plenty of ribbon on the inside, take it out in the mold a little bit hot, okay, and it will then shrink back and you'd have stressed skin without actually having to mold it in, and probably be a lot more realistic. Okay, I could be talking rubbish here, but I think it would work really, really well. But that said, what I'm saying is they're on the edge of greatness because this panel line detail and the riveting detail and everything else like that is absolutely exquisite. It is the finest detail you will find anywhere. Um, it's just that little thing that lets it down. The other thing as well, that it does you can't feel it or see it, but you can see the injection molding marks where it came in from here and you've got the line where it all bends in from each of the, the actual pore marks. Okay, and we've got sinkage marks down in here as well, which, you know, again, it's just little things where it's picking it up from here. But, as I say, from external point of view, and if you're not worried about all these sink marks all over it, it's absolutely lovely. So we've got a very nice mix of raised and recessed panel lining down all in here. Because actually what you've got, i just bring this side carry in just a touch. You might be able to see down here all these at the back are all raised, which is absolutely lovely. So you've got some that are recessed, some that are raised details, which will make for a finer job all over it. And as I say, that engine system. So down on the inside, as you can see, a little bit of framework, nothing major going on there. You add that in a moment. Okay, so the inner one. So we've got, again, just again, got tiny little bits of sink marks on some of the parts. But that said, very nice detail as you can see. We've got all this instrument detail and wiring going down here on the cockpit floor. The seat itself looks quite good. Very nice little touch on there. The wheels, we've got weight on wheels, which is absolutely lovely to see. So that's all good. The actual doors themselves, very nice. They are in good stead. And again, we don't have an ejector pin in the middle of those, which is quite a nice touch. So we don't have to worry about those. And they're actually very, very nicely done. This sheeting that goes over them does look like actual sheeting, so that's quite a nice touch. 
Okay, the bonds themselves all look to be fine. You even got the little veins on the front, which is quite a nice touch. And as we move up, you've got some nice detail on the gun, so that's very nice. The actual um, bomb racks themselves, very smartly molded and everything else. This intake, very nicely done. It's seamless as well on the inside, so that's a nice little touch. And as I say, the main gear doors, the exhaust stacks, quite fine. Be nice to hollow them out a little bit. Okay, but as I said, you do have the option. You can either have normal wheels or weight on wheels, so you do have that option to go through. The prop itself, we've got no problem with that at all. A little bit of cleanup needed, a little bit of flash on the edges and everything else. And then obviously we've got this cockpit detail, so as I said, some very nice detail going on there with the controls, the boxes and switches and everything else down in there. The radio packs on the back and everything else. So generally, as you say, that's lovely. Very nice detail. Last up, we've got the wings. Okay, so as you can see, we've got these little dive brakes that are down in here. I presume they're dive brakes, I assume they're dive brakes. But as I said, very nicely molded right the way through, as you can see. Some nice detail, catch it all in the light, you can sort of see it there. That's all absolutely fantastic. And then as you're actually moving along there, hopefully you can pick it up, that's all pretty good. And then we've got the, on the top as well, got the gun ports on the front, the lights and everything else like that and then last but no means least down here on the inside as you can see we've got some very nice detail going on inside that main gear well that's absolutely lovely nice level of detail and that's what i'm saying with it it's just a shame it's got the sink marks if you don't care about sink marks give this kit a 10 because it's got sink marks we're going to give it an eight okay now clear parts because we're in a lovely clear bag here we won't even bother getting these out these are absolutely lovely you probably see no problem with these at all. We've got no sign of webbing. They are all crystal, crystal, as crystal clear can be. And again, did I tell you that it's made in South Korea? <laughs> Decals. So, it's a shame there's no sheet to protect these. Okay, horrible harness, so you, you know, and everything else. And they're extremely thick to the point of, you can read this like Braille, they are so thick. So you are going to need probably your softeners and setters to get them into all that lovely recess and raise detail and everything else like that. But there again, we are all very nicely in register. We don't have any trouble with register problems or anything else. It's all very nice and crisp. You can read all of the writing and everything else as you go right the way down it. And the, uh, the blue on the stars and stripes or stars and bars and all the rest of it all seem to be very much nicely in register and beautifully done. So no problem with that at all. So there we go. Lovely kit, I have to say. Um, certainly something I haven't heard of. You know, you might have all heard of this thing, but I haven't heard of it before with an A36 Apache. Just one of those sort of unique, iconic type of aircraft that sort of slipped through the wall unnoticed, I think, by a lot of people. But again, the kit itself, from a kit point of view, is absolutely beautiful. Lovely level of detail. You know, normally I can go around and think, yeah, you want to replace that, you want to do that. To be honest, there isn't much on that one. That's an absolutely lovely kit. And as you can see, really, you've only got four, sort of three sprues, four with the clear. So it's going to go together quite quickly. So you can spend that little bit extra time, perhaps detailing a few little areas. As I said, maybe the seat, putting some harnesses in, things like that. Um, perhaps a little bit of lead wiring around it just to liven it up and things. But apart from that, out of the box, that is an absolutely stunning kit. Lovely little details, as I say, having the, the benefit of weight on wheels or not as well, which is a nice touch. No ejector pin marks anywhere you'd worry about. No sign of flash at all, which is absolutely fantastic. It is just literally those little sink marks, which are just a little bit annoying. But as I said, you know, you could always call it stress skin and, and uh, get away with it like that. So there we go, that is the Italeri 148A36 Apache. So there you go, as I said, something a little bit different. Um, as you say, I didn't even have heard of an A36 Apache like that. If you showed me that at a glance, I'd just say it's a Mustang. But as you said, um, something a little bit different. Um, certainly something I've never heard of before, but it does look a lovely kit. And don't take too much notice of me talking about sink marks and everything else. I think by the time you've got the paint on it and everything else, you're not going to actually notice too much about it at all. So next one up, we've got, this is the Special Hobby 132nd Monster T2 Buckeye. Okay, kit review time. What we've got here is the Special Hobby 132nd scale Buckeye. Now, this is the T2. Uh, it was the, um, I don't know how many along the lines, about 1960s. Um, jet trainer, obviously really famous for doing carrier work and everything else for the Navy and the Marines. I think the Greek Air Force had them, and is it somewhere like Venezuela, something else like that had them as well, in that sort of light attack, uh, attack role, carrying a couple of bombs and rockets, things like that. 
little bit of history, um, special hobby, tend to be known for sort of limited run kits, things like that. They also do a lot of um, injection work for other companies. Um, and this is where this sort of story falls in here. Now, I could be completely wrong, but this is how I'm led to believe it. Um, special hobby did the injection molding work for um, the two bobs 148 scale short run production kit which was an injection molded version of this kit in 148 scale and then special hobby did a limited run of their own afterwards in 148 scale as well but two bobs were the guys behind it you've heard of them they make the fantastic decals and everything else so it was um, a little bit of a surprise to me that all of a sudden they've come out with a 132nd one. So I'm assuming they've taken the data uh, and everything from the 148 scale kit and upscaled it and everything else into the box. But anyway, that's enough of that one. Um, basically what you get in here is a little bit of mul uh, multimedia, so get a little bit of resin, um, some nice decals and everything else like that. So down in the box, see lovely artwork on the front, absolutely stunning. And then a little bit about it. So obviously it's saying it comes from the Czech Republic, as we know anyway. Kit number is SH32037. Usual thing on the other side and on the back, which is the same. And all things like that. So in the box, that's it. We'll leave it open. Now this is the first time I've looked in here. So um, as you can see, uh, NPM Productions, um, some of the other bits and pieces. Uh, we've got the instructions, which I think we'll start with, and then we'll make our way through. So we'll make a little bit of room. Okay, so with the instructions, a little bit of the history on this one, as you can see. Um, so, uh, trick to the air, 1958, and then was combat versions of the back uh, T2s. I'm just trying to see. Exported to yet yeah, the Hellenic, uh, the Greek Air Force, and the Venezuelan. See, I was correct. Uh, and there's some T2s in private hands in the US, which is nice. Okay, so what have we got down here? Usual thing, we've got the actual parts, call outs and everything else. One part you don't use, the rest we all do. Okay, quite nice, nice color details showing in. Um, I've had the decals go in to make up the instrument panels front and rear. Uh, a little bit of work going down here into the actual thing. Color call outs, we've got them basically in guns, uh, as you can imagine. And then just generally, we're gonna be working our way through. So looks to be nice cockpit detail um, I thought some of it might be risen actually some of it is I think some isn't uh, but we'll look at those nice full length intakes um, with the engines and everything else quite a nice touch uh, the seats we'll look at closely in a moment uh, and we've got these uh, power units and things like that which uh, another thing we'll look at in a moment cockpit going in there uh, the wings uh, doesn't look like we get yes we do do we get flaps Yes, we get flaps as well. We've got this one piece bottom, which can be a bit of a pain to fit all of those. Um, Harriers tend to have them, A6 intruders, things like that. They tend to be a right pain to get right. So it'd be interesting to see on this one. Here we go then, positionable flaps going in, which is a nice touch. Uh, then we've got the wheels going through. Some nice detail going into these, I must admit, it looks really, really nice. Uh, and as I say, it's 132nd scale, so don't think we're looking at the 148 here. Okay, canopy going on, the ejector seats going in, then we've got stencil data, advertising, and then obviously the markings. Shark mouth one, brilliant. Okay, so as you know, my thing with shark mouths. Red, white, and your black scheme. No, but so you don't get any of the other ones, hence it says on the box the uh, white and red scheme rather than uh, the you know other versions of it like the Hellenic one, the Greek one, or the Venezuelan Air Force and things like that. So down in the thing, one giant bag of sprues, which I am not a fan of, as we know. I think you can get scraped, but immediately you can get a size of this beast. Look at the size of that, that is an absolute monster. Okay, immediate things I'm looking at, um, you probably see as well, one, it's scratched up to death, uh, but that's because it's been running around a bag, but what you have got is what I call sort of next generation riveting. So it's not just a hole, it is actually a proper rivet, so you get the circle with the raised hump in the middle, which you can use by using, um, you know, obviously riveting tools and that nowadays to reposition them. Um, closed speed brake, so we can't do anything with that. Um, the, the surface feels horrible. The actual plastic feels horrible. But there again, it's um, it's not Tamiya, Trumpeter, things like that, Hobby Boss. Um, it's somewhere in between that. But it has got very, very nice 
detailed, very detailed, highly detailed even, recessed panelling. Okay, the plastic's a little bit warpy uh, and some things on that, but you do get a size of how big this puppy is actually going to be. As you can see, it is going to be quite a chunk when this thing's together. You are going to end up with something pretty big and chunky. So looking at the inside, um, ejector pin marks seem to be all out of the way. The ones which are in the way are countered. Uh, the other ones are just up on the surface, so you might want to take like this little guy out here a little bit. But generally, as you can see, it seems to be all very nice. You know, pretty nice fit. I can't see any miss moles, blemishes, or anything else like that. It's just that riveting detail. It does give it a quite a gritty feel. Okay, so down in here we've got the full length of these actual intakes, as we were talking about and they are seamless, uh, as in we don't have any ejector pin marks down into them. Obviously seamless, not as in they're in one piece. All right, going down again, that detail is very nice on all of these parts. Windscreen, obviously things like that, obviously on other bits, so we'll look through as we go right the way through, but as I say, it seems to be very, very nice, all of those. This is that belly plate we were talking about. It's, um, as you can see, some very nice detail on here. Unfortunately, you're probably gonna lose a lot when you try and get this in and sanding and filling and everything else like that. Generally though, I think these are the wheel well base, very nice level of detail, some nice bits going on in there. Lovely detail in things like this as well. Nice raised detail all the way through. Right, okay. Yeah, not too bad, quite horrible ejector pins, but you're not gonna see those. This is the nose wheel, this one here and here, but you say, got a little ejector pins going in in there, but generally very nice level of detail. <coughs> fuel tank which has got very large raised uh, panel lines on there which they do have okay looking again nice detail the one thing is popping out this is a fantastically detailed kit you've got a nice mixture of um, you know raised and recessed details all over these and it's all nicely in scale and everything else like that hopefully you can sort of picking it up on the, the light catches it and everything else it really is very pleasant. The only thing you are going to watch for, you've got raised panel light ejector pins in all of these, they're slightly raised, so when you come to put it together, the chances are they're going to interfere with something maybe in the way, so might be worth giving them a swipe. Again, more control surfaces, again, lovely level of detail on all of these, absolutely exquisite. And the big thing is, considering the plastic itself feels quite not the right word but cheap um, there's no flash on the parts as such you know the parts aren't perfect but they are certainly in there the only trouble is we've got down here you probably see them catch them in the light big big sink marks in there which are always a pain when they're there so they're gonna have to be taken care of ideally okay so we've got probably decals we know but we've got nice raised bezels and everything down here on this cockpit detail on the instrument panels and the back of them as well so it's quite nice they're going to be showing through Rudder pedals, we've got some nice texture going on with those. Okay, and generally all the parts, cockpit floor. Okay, a little bit basic, but it'll go. It'll be absolutely fine. And we've got the instrument panel detail all running down here. Again, looks pretty good. You know, I think it's all really adequate without, you know, being uber critical of it. Okay, main gear. Uh, leg, nose wheel gear, things like that, the wheels, so we've got the brake hubs and everything down there, they seem to be, all be very very nice, happy with all of those, okay, um, no sign of any problems, no weight on wheels or anything else like that, a little bit basic these, but you know, again, it's basic but it's adequate, so you're not really going to see much going down there, so nice detail on the arrest uh, hook, you might be able to see, let me show this up on the close cam, you can see you've got some nice detail going on inside that, and everything else, tiny little bit of flash here, but I say being critical now. But nice touch, we got no ejector pin marks in these doors, so really nice with those. And last up for this bit, anyway, we have the wings, which there's so much detail going on in these wings, you can see it when you catch it in the light, you know, that it feels like a sandpaper, it's so rough, but that's what it is. It's you know, all that detail showing through, and it is absolutely exquisite when you catch it in the light like this. As you can see, it is absolutely gorgeous. And again, can't see any problems with this anywhere at all. Okay, we've got ejector pin marks down in these, which are a little bit nasty, but um, you know, if you are worried about it or not, you probably want to take these two out as well. Okay, 
but I am surprised because of the weight as well. It seems to be very, very heavy plastic, that the actual parts themselves are all good, okay? Anyway, down in here, you get these bits. So we've got nice little bits of resin going on. So if we just get my little zip bags here, we can see what we've got, being very careful because this bit looks like it's got bits falling off it already. Whoever puts them in bags needs shooting. Okay, because I have feelings that these are gonna fall off. You see these little antennas on the top here, they're just waiting to fall off. Okay, so you say you've got some nice detail there. These are absolutely lovely. Seeing the detail in these, very, very nice. As I say, some nice craftsmanship going into that one. Okay, and these little guys down here. So we've got the little pull handles, which to be honest, I would replace anyway, but you know, they're okay. Some of the little boxes, and the little switches down in there, that's not bad. Another one of these as well, which I'm not sure if this should be in the middle or it's just an off. But there we go, we can see those. And we've got these little blades as well fine work done there. Keep all the bits because it might be useful. Okay, and we've got the seats. I won't get the other one out because they're a match pair. So we've got molded in harnesses. It's quite nice how the harnesses tuck down the back there. That's quite a nice little touch. Now with your camera, it's probably best to try and see down in there. But again, very nice detail all the way around it. That's a little bit more detail than you'll get off of actually, you know, making one out of uh, styrene and putting it in or trying to make harnesses and things. Some nice details all around that one. I think that one that's off the block will be absolutely fantastic. Okay, clear parts. At least these are separate bags. So we have the clear part. All right. Now it looks like, I don't know, it looks like we've got this little fuzzy thing going on down the bottom. We've seen it in some kits recently. Um, and as you say, when you move it across, it's pretty clear. I don't have a problem with that at all. Okay, looks to be nice. So obviously it's details all on the outside, which is great because it'll make our masking really, really easy. Okay, so no problems with that. So you've got no webbing or any blemishes in the actual molding itself. That is all pretty good. Let me just tuck him down there and get him bagged up. And last but no means least, we can have a look in the front fret. Nice little moulding job. Again, that's clear, that's lovely. Really, really nice. So we've got nice clear front windscreen there. No deviations or anything else like that. All the lights as well, beautifully done. Nice and clear, crisp moulding that is. That's a lovely bit of clear injection moulding there. All of them, without exception, are absolutely perfect. So that's really nice. Okay, so last but no means least, we can have a look in the decals and see exactly what they're like. I'm surprised because two bobs haven't done them for them. <laughs> so, down in the decals, who has done them? I did notice it earlier. Somebody else, though, definitely not them. Okay, little Abbey print. Looking pretty good, nice and sharp. I can't see any problem with them decals at all. They look uber thin. In fact, you can hardly see any film at all. A little bit, but they don't look too thick. Unfortunately though, I think this blue lets it down. It looks a bit too blue to me. It needs to be slightly darker blue than that. And unfortunately, this all the stencil data is pretty much unreadable. It's too blurred, it's not sharp enough, which is a real shame actually, because I have great things and also these just look like, I don't know, there's just not enough sharpness in these. And it looks like they're slightly out of register, just a touch as well, perhaps on the ejection handles, I don't know, on the ejection uh, warning labels. But yeah, it's a shame because it's all here. It's just, I don't know, up the resolution a little bit because these are far too blurred. You can't see what any of these say, apart from caution and rescue. The rest of them you don't, you know, even the no steps and don't walks and that and drains is only because I know where they are, you're doing it. This one on this side seems to be a lot better. But as I said, I'm sure the aftermarket tackle boys will be along if you did want to do it, or you could probably get away with using these anyway. So there we go, that is the one thirty second, not forty eight, this is the thirty second Hawkeye Bucker. Um Hawkeye, what are you on about? <clears throat> um this is the special hobby. Uh, Buckeye, this is the T2 trainer in the red and white scheme, lovely kit. 
So again, another big old kit, that is quite chunky, and I must admit the level of detail on the surface is absolutely lovely. So those resin bits and pieces inside there, it should make a good kit. But as I said, I haven't put one together, and I don't know any video has yet, but it will be very impressive. And because it's in that red and white scheme, it'd be absolutely lovely. But I'm sure, obviously, the Greek and the Venezuela one is gonna be coming along at some point as well. Right, forum news. Okay, um, we've had the voting going on in the forum. And amazingly, um, if I just tell you the voting, I picked the top five suggestions, if you like. If you remember, I let you have a look at the stash behind me. And basically I went along and I picked out the top five overall uh, winners from your suggestions into the forum thread, okay? So we took them and we put them in a poll. Now, the winner, by a long way, when before we had the poll was for the Sky Raider, which is the Trumpeter Sky Raider, which is over there, okay? Um, but unfortunately, that didn't win. What we actually had in reverse order, with 10% of the vote went to the F-35, thank you everyone. 19% uh, of the vote went to the Jaguar. This was for this particular one here, the GR1, GR3 kit. Uh, second place went to the Sky Raider, okay, but your first place, uh, place kit actually went to the HE11, which is this one. So there we go, this will be our next build up. I'm going to get the full Photo X jobby for this one, get the big headset for it, uh, and any other nice bits of goodies and all the rest of it. And considering everybody always says to me, oh, but you only built one 30 second one, because you guys asked me to do it. Don't forget, you're my boss, you tell me what to do, and I'll just build it. So what will happen is with that one, I will actually have the tornado is going to go slightly on the back burner for a sec whilst you guys catch up with the video. The hind will obviously push right the way through. As soon as those two are built, they'll go over to the spray bay, okay, and can be sprayed in there. And then I can get the, um, obviously the hind clout and we can work on it on here and go right the way through. So what's going to happen is you're going to have the tornado on the go and the hind and then obviously the HE111. Tornado is not going to take long to be honest. Hind a little bit more weathering going to be going on with that one. So it's going to be a little bit more special. Uh, but certainly we do have the space now and I can really get on with it and get lots of different projects on the go. Because I did say that, you know, obviously I'll pick the winners, I am also going to do the um, 30 second Sky Raider, Trumpeter One, I am gonna do it. And also I am, because I'm a martyr, and after I slacked off Kitty Hawk, I better make it right. Um, I will do the Jaguar as well. So, and I've got a special idea of a Jaguar scheme that I could do by a certain member who used to fly them. So I'll be, yeah, I'm going to be coming crunching you for references now. All right, so um, our ex-Jaguar pilot, he's um, going to be my reference man for this one. Um, so there we go. So as I said, nobody's going to lose on this one. I'm just going to do all three, bounce off of them. And then what we'll do, we're going to leave those other ones still in the pool and I'll add another three to it. And then in a couple of months time, we'll come back and do it again. As I said, I'm on a bit of a roll now with all of this really pushing through the kits and everything else. I'm not messing around with giant bits of resin and stuff like that, so don't panic. So what can happen now? Hopefully I'm gonna get a kit done one or two a month, okay? And we can just then go through, get back on track to what we did best, which is actually building kits uh, and showing you guys exactly how we do it, do's and don'ts. And if there's any cock-ups, I'll make them before you do. Okay, so that's the plan with that one. Next up, we've got, um, can I remind all the members, your um, little banners that you have in the forum? Let's just try and keep it to two if we can, because some of you got sort of three or four, and quite frankly, it's all right when you're on your PC, but when you're on your tablet, your iPhone, that's a lot of scrolling. All right, so if we can keep it just to a couple would be better. And um, just remember to go around and take out the empties. I know poor old Steve goes around and deletes them off of you for you, um, but it would save him a job from having to do all of that. So if you could please go around and just delete your, um, you know, the actual banners, they'll go to a box when they've ended, okay? So if you can then go along, change them or delete them off your signature thread, that would be a real help. It just speeds everything up. Speaking of which, We've actually got here, as you can see, this is our prizes for our giant um, uh, silver screen uh, prize thing. So actually what we've got here is first prize is going to be the Zukomori uh, Sky Raider. Now, as we all know, that's not cheap and it's got the photo etch set in there as well. Second prize is the F14D and third prize is the ME410 kit, the main one, okay? Now, to be honest, I did have every 
thing of doing the new into today's new show but to be honest it is far too big um, I've made a bit of a special thing out of it so what we're gonna have Wednesday next week we're gonna have a special um, show uh, that won't affect the new show because that'll be here after it but on Wednesday uh, I will then do a special with your work who the winners are which I've decided which I'm picking this year okay all your medals they're all here and I to be honest as well I'm pulling it out a little bit because I'm waiting for the new stickers to turn up who still haven't turned up um, so I just need to go and kick someone's ass uh, to get them delivered here quicker all right so that's our prizes special show next Wednesday here on Flory Models um, you can see all your great work we had loads of entries into this one and the judging which I've almost made my mind up was not easy at all and as I said it's not so much quality of work it's your quality of your bills okay so it's how you explained it how you help the other members they're the guys that are going to win over everybody else so that's it okay that's about it for this week I think I've covered everything let me just check the Privileged? Yes, no, we're all done. Um, nothing else really on today's show, purely because I'm trying to make it a little bit shorter so I can get it uploaded for Friday, because as I say, it's just killing me my internet at the moment. They still haven't done my broadband. If anybody knows anybody who works for BT, you know, can they say, you know, there's a poor guy down in Devon who's got fiber optic, but they won't turn it on for some reason. Never mind, waffling. Okay, everybody, happy modeling, take care. Remember, these video builds, they're up on the site now. The hind one will be next week, okay? But this one is up and also the full one for the clear. So make sure you check those out, members, and I'll see you next week. So until next week, everybody, happy modeling and take care.